Something weird, though, happened to me a couple weeks ago. I sat next to a black guy on the subway. How fucked up would it be if the story just ended right there? <laughs> no, so I sat next to a black guy on the subway, and he was listening to Nickelback, like really loud. And I don't want to say that I didn't think black people listen to Nickelback. It's just that I really didn't think black people listen to Nickelback. Also on the subway, I saw this piece of graffiti that said, Jesus could have been gay. And I was like, with that hair and that beard, doubtful. <laughs> but I ride the subway a lot because I'm poor. And recently I've been doing this new things where I intently stare at girls only so I can end up on Craigslist misconnections. <laughs> just like creepily looking, just like, yeah. And, and if you don't know what misconnections are, clear your life is a lot happier than mine. But I'm gonna to attempt to explain. Uh, it's basically like you see somebody and then you post on the internet like, I saw this person, maybe they'll randomly see this fucking thing and we'll be best friends forever. It's kind of like a Nicholas Sparks novel and a missing persons ad had a creepy baby and that baby was the shitty message board. And yet I read it every day. I'll be like, oh, guy in a tan jacket? I owned a tan jacket in 2005, that's probably me. <laughs> and it never is. And the weird thing is people meet people off of Craigslist. The only thing more dangerous than meeting people off of Craigslist is skinny dipping in a pool of Magic Johnson's blood. And I don't even know, I don't even know how you would begin to do this if you were a woman. Oh God, I always get scared when black people yell at me. But uh, the, if you're a woman, I don't know how you do this, because I'm assuming if you're a woman meeting people off the internet, your biggest fear is that you would be raped or murdered. Like, I'm assuming that's your biggest fear. Second would probably be, like, having to go Dutch or something. I, I don't know. But when I meet people off the internet, my biggest fear is just that they're not fat. And based on what I've seen from internet dating, a lot of girls think they're curvy. And not like Christina Hendricks curvy. Like, would you describe a tub of cottage cheese as curvy? I don't think you would. But hey, big girls need love too. Not for me, but someone, I mean. But it's strange because yet everything I do, I do for women. In fact, the only reason I'm up here right now is that someone out there with a vagina, I'm hoping, decides to make a fucking terrible mistake tonight. Because I have a very specific plan every time I go out. I drink a bunch, and then I text everyone I've ever kissed. Because the way I see it, hooking up with me is a little bit like drug addiction. You might think you're done with it, but you have one bad night, and you're back off that wagon. Or on that wagon, if you know what I'm saying. I want to be clear, the wagon's my cock. <laughs> and people in this audience, people in this audience have made that mistake. Wait, Hoots isn't here, right? All right, forget that last part then. You called me gay last year. But I still hook up with girls, even though it almost never goes according to plan. Uh, anytime a girl gets up my ear and goes, you can do whatever you want, my next thought is always, well, I hope she wipes well. And taking a bra off, fuck that. Me taking a bra off, I'm sweaty, I'm confused. I'm assuming watching me take off a bra is gonna be like watching somebody try to defuse a sexy bomb. Eventually I get the tits out like they're in a car accident. I just need to get them out as fast as possible and I'm just like, ah, fuck, take it off. It's very erotic. Uh, recently, I was hooking up with this girl and I reached behind her and accidentally ripped her bra off like I was Hulk Hogan. And I thought this was kind of sexy, especially when I was like, uh, <laughs> but apparently bras are really expensive. <laughs> so she was pretty unhappy. And sadly, I ended up falling for her. I was like in love with her and it didn't work out. And she left me. So the whole thing ended up a lot more Owen Hart than Hulkamania. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> 
I even made her a mixtape. A mixtape, like I'm in high school, like with songs on it about how I felt. You know, making a mixtape is like saying, here's a bunch of stuff I wanted to say to you, but somebody more talented and attractive already said it, so there you go. That's for you. But it's okay, because I found I really can't be in a relationship. I can't be in a relationship for one reason. Flaccid penis. Uh, it's just sad. Like, I don't want anyone to have to see this. It reminds me of, like, Snuffleupagus. Like, just, hey, bird if Snuffleupagus had a really unfulfilling trunk. <laughs> but the penis, when you think about it, was really the world's first Transformer, which is pretty cool. <laughs> but I, I have no idea how relationships even work. <laughs> like these guys. I have no idea how relationships even work. Like, I'm like Charlie Brown, I keep running up, and Lucy just pulls the vagina away. <laughs> But I think it's mainly because most of what I know about relationships I try and learn from television. And some of the stuff going on in TV is just totally fucked up. Like, I don't understand when a couple wakes up in the morning and immediately starts making out with one another. I would never do that. I wake up and I smell like somebody pooped in my mouth. I don't know who's like into that. And also, another thing that I always see in television and movies is uh, the guy will want a girl he can't have. And he'll say to her, he'll be like, well, I just want you to be happy. And then he'll look at the guy she's with and be like, bro, just treat her right. I just want you to be happy? What? No, I want you to be with me. If you're not with me, I don't give a fuck what you do. I'm not mature enough to have that emotion. I'm not mature. I'm so not mature my voice cracks when I yell. And I'm, not, I'm definitely not going to be like, and you know what? And I'm happy you're blowing this guy now. Have a fucking wonderful time for yourself. I've said I want you to be happy to a girl I loved one time in my life. And it was two and a half minutes before she got married. I figured my time was pretty much up. But even then, if she'd been like, I want to sleep with you, I would have been like, yeah, he doesn't love you like I do. Let's get out of here. <laughs> because all the good girls are taken. They're with assholes. And I say they're with assholes because the, the people they're with are not me. And they always have fucking names like Brent or Dennis. You know what I think of when I hear the name Dennis? Brad. Douchebag. Chad. Brad. Chad, also douche. Brett. let's just Brad. yell out a bunch of dude names. Yeah. Kyle, fuck that, right? Yes. Mark. No, and they always, <laughs> yes, Mark. And they always. <laughs> Somebody's vagina must be so happy with that mustache. Now, and you know these guys, they always bring like tennis rackets to work or pop a collar. And it's just the fucking assholes, right? And uh, they always wear pork pie hats too. And I would love to wear a pork pie hat, but I'm not Justin Timberlake, so I don't. But I still kind of want to do it, but my desire to do it is slightly outweighed by my other desire to not look like an enormous asshole. I was, uh... I was a little rough on the name Dennis and Kyle and a bunch of other names a minute ago. I want you to know because this girl I really like is uh, fucking this guy named Dennis. So that's why that happened. <laughs> um, I mean, but I'm sure there's some cool Dennis's out there like, uh, like Eckersley. <laughs> I was gonna say Dennis the Menace, but he's just such a little cunt. To Mr. Wilson, he's just such a little prick, and he hasn't changed his clothes in 60 years. He's been wearing the same. I'm back to hating Dennis. I fuck. I hate. I hate people named Dennis. Have you ever asked somebody out and then masturbated, and immediately realized that you weren't the slightest bit attracted to them? Because I have. And uh, then I'm just sitting there like, oh fuck, I really should have done that in the exact opposite order. Now I gotta go to the Olive Garden. Oh, and it's horrible. I have a couple more thoughts on masturbation though, so that's good for all of you. I don't know what it is about a hotel towel that just makes me say, I should jerk off into that. <laughs> and furthermore, I think you can tell if you're really in love with the girl based not on if you think about her when you're jerking off, but if you think about her immediately after. Because that's love. I've been in love with three girls in my life, 
and I've never jerked off thinking about any of them, which is actually sad to realize because it means I can't even fuck them in my dreams. <laughs> Recently, I asked one of them out, and she's like, I wouldn't date you if you were the last guy on earth. And I was like, if, you, if I was the last guy on earth, your entire friends and family would all be dead, so I guess you have bigger things to worry about, wouldn't you? <laughs> if I was the last guy on earth, though, Magnum condom sales would just plummet. <laughs> I just, I don't like taking girls out. I do it often, but there's always that awkward moment at the end. You kiss, you not kiss. I can't get turned down for a kiss. That's like my own personal Katrina. Like just, ugh, it's, it's horrible. 2011 though was a uh, really big year for me. I started going down on girls. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing is the appropriate reaction to that. <laughs> but it's because I had a bad experience, but a gentleman never tells. Luckily for all of you, I am not a gentleman. <laughs> About five years ago, I'm hooking up with this girl in the back of a car, because I'm classy. And she goes, do you want to have sex? And I was like, um, yes. So she takes off my pants, and I'm like, more than meets the eye. <laughs> and then she takes off her pants, and when I tell you it reeked, I mean I fucking retched. <laughs> but here's the thing, she smells this too. So she looks at me and she goes, did you just come? <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, in my head, I'm like, bitch, what do you think my ejaculate smells like? Does it smell like an overchlorinated YMCA pool in here? Then no. <laughs> and I was about ready to say this to her. And then I realized there's no casual, polite way to say, no, actually, your pussy smells so bad I want to die. <laughs> so I did the only thing I could. I looked her right in the eye and I said, yeah, I'm sorry, I came. Uh, I don't know what to do, I should go. Oh God. Because cum is scary. That shit makes babies. And I don't want one of those. Uh, because I've noticed parents in New York, they only have two disciplinary moves. They count to three, and then they act like they're leaving their child forever. It's always like, one, Brian, Two, two and a half, three, bye Brian, bye. And the kids just sitting there like blubbering, like I was just bouncing this ball in the supermarket. I didn't know that fucking, I'm an orphan now, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I always want to walk up to him and be like, dude, don't worry about it. She's gonna come back. Like really, she has to, she, legally, she's gonna be totally fucked if she doesn't come get you. <laughs> Why are you crying? Stop making this awkward. Why are you talking to strangers? Stop crying, one, two. <laughs> and then I realize how it fart friggin' happens. Speaking of moms, recently, I saw this girl I went to college with on the street, and she was looking kind of downtrodden. And I was like, I haven't talked to her in like four years. I didn't want to say hello to her. So I ducked in somewhere, and then I went up to my office, and I went on Facebook, and I found out that her mom died that day. And my first thought was, thank Christ I didn't talk to that girl. Because <laughs> that would have been uncomfortable for me. And I don't like uncomfortable moments. Like, have you ever seen a homeless person in a restaurant. It's kind of like you went to the zoo and then you got home and there was a lion on your bed. You're just like, this is not where I'm accustomed to seeing you. You're changing the rules. I figure once I walk through a door, it's my opportunity to act privileged. <laughs> oh, you hate poverty. That's good. Um, they, no, but seriously, so recently I'm in this Burger King and this guy comes up to me and asks me for money. And I'm like, I don't have any. But I clearly do, because I'm eating a fucking sandwich right in front of him. <laughs> and he's like, seriously, man? I was like, no, seriously. And it's kind of like when your mom catches you touching yourself, and she knows, and you know, and you're just like, I, I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> so I did the only thing I could. I put the burger down, and I looked him right in the eye, and I was like, I'm sorry, I came. I don't know what to do. I should go. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Mark Zito, give it up for Mark Zito.